So in this little setup, I've got the black box and the Yamaha DX, which is a polysynth. And really this setup would work the same with any polysynth uh, that supports MIDI. And so the way I've got them hooked up right now is just a single USB cable uh, between the DX and the black box. So the DX is acting as a MIDI controller for the black box, allowing me to use these keys to control anything I want in there. And, but this is also bi-directional MIDI. So I can record my MIDI sequences into the black box and then play them back out into the DX. Uh, then for audio, I've got audio coming out of the DX going into the input on the black box. And then this uh, is just power for the black box going off to a battery. I'm recording into a separate field recorder here because uh, I, it's, if I were to try to resample and record everything internally in the black box, every time I hit stop, it would stop the recording. And that would make it very difficult to sync up with this video later. So this is kind of a convenience if I were actually just making music and not trying to make a video, I wouldn't really need this. So this is a pretty simple little thing I have set up. Um, I'm only using five of the 16 pads right now. Uh, up here, I've got just a very basic little drum kit. I've got a bass drum, I've got a percussion sound, and then I've got the shaker sound. So that's it. That's my whole drum kit. Um, if I go into sequences, all three of these are being sequenced by this single pad sequencer. And uh, so my uh, kick drum is the bottom row there, and then the first perk, and then the shaker on top of that. So we can start by just hearing what that sounds like. And here I've got some delay and uh, reverb on there also. This is just a standard 16 step sequence, which is the default, and I'm only using the single A variation. I'm not using the other variations on this yet. So this is just kind of the most basic little drum pattern. And uh, the idea is that this is really just a metronome for me to play along to more than anything else. Now down here are my two polyphonic pads. And this is where um, I think it's really interesting to use the black box in this way. So in the first one here, uh, you see it says MIDI. So there's actually no way of labeling these by default. Um, normally this would just be a blank pad, but I went and created myself a file that is just called midi.wave, and it's just one second of silence. And I just made that in Audacity, and I save it on here, and I use it basically as a placeholder uh, just to make this the, the word MIDI show up here to remind myself that that's what I'm using this pad for and to not accidentally overwrite it with something else. So I'm using this as my... MIDI pad in order to communicate with the DX. So on the MIDI one here, let's just show you quickly how it works. So if I go into tools and go into the MIDI section, uh, my MIDI sequencer is set to channel 15. If I go into, that's that's basically the, the channel that the sequencer is listening to for incoming MIDI. So if I go into my DX here, uh, I also have it on channel 15. That's transmit TR channel 15 and it's receiving on all channels. So um, that's basically the whole setup here. Oh, I also have to go down here and set up uh, USB device out enabled. So that means that I'm allowing the black box to send MIDI out through the USB device port, which is how the DX is connected. So I wanna make sure that's turned on as well. So basically I have a MIDI loop going between these two. This is sending on 15, this is listening on 15, and it's also sending back to here. So with everything set up like this, if I go into my sequencers, um, my lower left one here, the one that I labeled as MIDI, that is the one that is sending a sequence out to the DX. So if I turn off all the rest of them, you can see that's the only one I have turned on, the rest are off. And if I hit play, and I start turning this volume up, we'll start hearing the DX play the MIDI information that's in this sequence. to demonstrate that it is actually playing through here. I can play with the pitch band a bit. Right, 
right? So that's the beauty of this kind of setup is I can send this, you know, kind of long and complex MIDI sequence and be live tweaking it on the synth while I go. Okay, so that's all well and good. Now, what if I want to use this as a MIDI controller to control the black box sounds without also hearing this? Well, on the DX, I'm just turning the volume down because it's just easier. Um, what I have set up here is actually a multi-sample pad. And what that means is that within a single pad, there's a whole bunch of samples that are mapped out over the keyboard. And this is another, I think, key feature of the black box. And so if you look at each one of these, it'll just show a single sample if it's, if it's not playing. Um, but if I play different keys, oh, I need to change the MIDI input here. So this one I have set to listen on channel 14. So on my DX, I'm changing it to channel 14. And now, you can see all these different keys, each one is triggering a different sample. Now they're all related. They're supposed to sound like one cohesive instrument. They're all sampled from one instrument. However, you can use the same thing to set up a drum kit if you want. So each of these could be a different drum. So what I have in here is this little sequence that I recorded earlier. And um, that is just playing the multi-sample, which I played on this keyboard. So let's listen to that. See, if I do this, nothing happens because we're not playing this synth at all. Okay. Now, here's what's also interesting about this, I think. So if you remember from earlier, my drum pattern is only 16 steps. That's one bar. Now, my pattern I played on the DX, that is actually uh, 256 steps, which is 16 bars. And then the pattern I played on the multi-sample is 128 steps, which is eight bars. So each one of these samples, or sorry, each one of these sequences is playing a different length. Now, the drum, pattern is a perfect loop, so it's just going to loop forever. You can't really tell how long it is. Um, but with these other ones, they will actually play at different lengths and loop back over on themselves at different times. So that's a really cool thing about, I mean, any multi-track sequencer can do that. But in this case, we have this range from one step all the way to 256 steps, which is a lot to work with. So let's go ahead and just, um, I'm going to start with the drum pattern, and then I'll bring in these other two. say I wanted to go in and mute some of the drums kind of during the during the song playing and that's definitely one of the hardest things uh, to work around when all of them are within a single se sequencer track here because I can mute the entire thing but that's muting all my drums well the quick thing for that is just to head over to the mixer page get it in this mute mode and now I can selectively mute whichever pads I want So if you've recorded your entire drum uh, pattern into a single sequencer slot like this, or sequencer pad, that's the way of muting and unmuting individual sounds, as long as they are all spread out over this, over different pads like this. But if your drum kit is actually a multi-sampled or a slicer, then you can't do that because they're all going to be in one pad. 
So just kind of think ahead a bit while you're working within this. Um, if you want to be able to mute individual drum sounds, you might have to make sure that they're either split up across multiple pads like this or split up across multiple sequences. And then you can mute the sequences individually. shows pretty well uh, the strength of the sequencer. Um, the fact that you can go in and make you know these pretty complex uh, polyphonic MIDI recordings like this. Right, the, the DX here has a limit of eight voices, uh, but in here in the black box I'm not sure there, if there is a limit actually. Um, I know that in terms of polyphony of the voices, in terms of like multi samples, it's um, 16 per pad or 32 put total for the whole unit. But in terms of MIDI sequencing, I'm not sure if there is a limit or not. But if there is, I haven't hit it. You can see I can record plenty of notes here. So this is recording as a MIDI type, where it's just recording the MIDI data and no sound. Or I go into another one and I record the MIDI data and it triggers the internal sound, in this case a multi-sample, on the black box. So yeah, this is it's a great sequencer for this type of thing, for this type of like meandering melodic jamming, uh, you know, playing keys on top of like a backing beat type of thing. It's really great for that, better than anything else I've found so far.